Hello and welcome to Engineering Simple. In this video, I'll talk about transforming load losses and impedance. Load losses are equal to I squared R plus strain losses. I squared R are caused by winding resistances, and strain losses are caused by leakage flux. So when you apply voltage to one winding, voltage is induced, which causes flux to flow through the core, but not all of the flux is going to be contained within the core. Some of it will get out of the core and it will get to anything that's in the area like cord frame, tank, and it will cause some losses. For three phase transformers, uh, the total I squared R, since we have three phases, is three times the phase current squared times the phase resistance, or 1.5 times the line current squared times the line to line resistance, and this is true for wire delta. If, so during the P exam, if you if no stray losses are provided, then you can assume that the load losses are just I squared R. For single phase transformers, so this is just a transformer. The total I squared R is just the primary current squared times the primary resistance plus the secondary current squared times the secondary resistance. For three phase transformers, the total I squared R is 1.5 times the line current of the primary winding squared times the line to line resistance of, of the primary plus 1.5 times the line to, of the line current of the secondary winding squared times the line to line the resistance of the secondary winding. One thing to keep in mind is that resistance is dependent on temperature. As temperature increases, resistance increases. And you, so typically when the load losses are measured, they are measured at the ambient temperature and then they will be converted to a reference temperature uh, per, per IEEE or per, per spec. So let's assume we have a three-phase transformer. It's 150 kVA. The primary size is 12.47 kV, connected as a delta, and the secondary size is 480 volts, connected as a Y. Let's refer to the sketches to the right. So the first one, so we have the primary is a delta, so that's why we have a delta, so it's closed. So each winding has a resistance of 3 ohms. And the, second, the secondary wind is connected as a Y, so each winding has a resistance of 0.5 milli ohms. So let's calculate the total I squared R of this transformer. Since this is a three-phase transformer, we will use this formula that we have seen before. So first, let's calculate the primary, the line current of the primary one. So it's just the three-phase apparent power divided by square root of three times the line to line voltage of the primary. So if I plug in the numbers, I get 6.95 amps. I will do the same thing for the secondary currents. So That's three phase apparent power divided by square root of three times the line to line voltage of the secondary. I plug in the numbers, I get 180 plus uh, 180.4 amps. So one thing to note here, the side that has the highest voltage has the, the lowest current and the side with the lowest voltage has the highest current. If somehow as I'm calculating my numbers somehow let's assume I got 300 amps here that should be a flag that something is wrong because you always you always want to look at the numbers and say ask the question do they make sense 
So from from the graph with the H's, which means H1, H2, H3, we we'll see that the phase resistance is just 3 ohms. And we know from previous videos that the light align the resistance is two thirds of the phase resistance for the delta connected winding. So the light align resistance of the primary winding is two thirds times three ends up being two ohms. From the graph with the axis, which is x1, x2, x3, we we'll see that the winding resistance is 0.5 milli ohms. And we know that the line to line resistance of, of a winding connected as a Y is two times the phase resistance. So two, two times 0.5 milli ohms is 1 milli ohm, which is also equal to 0.001 ohm. So pay attention to the units because here I have milli ohms and I need to be consistent, ohms or milli ohms. Otherwise, if you don't use the right uh, units, then you will be off by big factors. So the total I squared R is just 1.5 times the line current of the primary squared times the line to line the resistance of the primary plus 1.5 times the line current of the secondary winding squared times the line to line resistance of the secondary winding. So if I plug in the numbers and I carry out the calculation, I get 193.7 watts. Please keep in mind, this is not a practical transformer. It's just an example for calculation purposes. But now let's do some calculations with uh, impedance. So another example, a transformer that's rated 11.3 MVA, 34.5 kV delta, and 12.74 kV y. GRD just means the y has a neutral rule that's grounded. So the line to line, sorry, the load to lo uh, load losses is 58 kilowatts, and core losses is 6 kilowatts. Loading factor 75 percent. The measured voltage during load loss test is 2.42 kV per phase. So when they, uh, during the load loss test, basically they will apply or they will circulate a rated current on the high side and they will short the low side windings and the voltage that it takes to circulate a rate current, that's called the impedance voltage. So let's calculate the per unit impedance of this transformer. So the magnitude of the impedance is the impedance voltage measured during load losses divided by the rate of voltage of the winding that's that the current is circulated at. So it's 2.42 kV divided by 34.5 kV. And please note, since this is a delta, the phase, the per phase voltage is the same as the line to line voltage. If it happened to be a Y, 34.5 kV Y, then I would have to divide 34.5 kV by square root of 3 because this is per phase, this has to be per phase. So it's just 7.01%. When our impedance is resistance plus J times reactance, resistance just load loss divided by Apparent power, so it's 58 kilowatt divided by 11.2 MVA. And be careful with the units. Here I have kilowatt, so K means times a thousand. Here I have MVA, M means times one million. Because if you don't carry out the factors properly, you will be off by a big factor. So it ends up being 0.517%. And when our reactants, from here, from this equation, is just square root of impedance squared minus resistance squared. So if I carry out the calculation, I get 6.99%. So I can write the impedance in the rectangular format, so it's just 0 0.005. 
one seven plus j times point zero six nine nine per unit. I can write in polar for, uh, format, which is point zero seven zero one per unit with an angle of eighty five point seven eight degrees. And I can write it in exponential format. It's just 0 0.0703 per unit uh, times e to the j times 85.78 degrees. Thank you for watching this video and have a great day.